Hi, I'm John from Craft Music, and today we're going to take an in-depth look at the step sequencer in the Moog Mother 32 semi-modular analog synthesizer. For a great deal on the Mother 32, check out our bundles at craftmusic.com. Mother 32's step sequencer has eight banks of eight patterns each, and patterns can be accessed using the pattern button and these eight step buttons, while banks can be accessed by holding down shift and pattern and then choosing a bank. In addition to the pattern location buttons, you can also use these arrow keys to scroll through patterns or banks. So to select pattern five and bank eight, I can press shift and pattern and then select bank eight, and then just press pattern to select pattern five, or to use the arrow keys, I can switch to pattern three in bank five by doing shift and pattern and scrolling to bank five, and then press just pattern to scroll to pattern three. To erase or initialize a pattern, press shift, reset, and pattern. This will not only remove any note information, it will also set the pattern length to a single step. The easiest way to record a series of notes into a pattern is in keyboard mode. This lets you play notes or rests one at a time and will set the pattern length to whatever number of notes you enter. So to enter a simple eight step pattern, I'm gonna press shift and record. And when I do, you'll see that this tempo LED that normally flashes red in time with the current tempo will change to solid yellow. Now I just enter my steps and while I'm entering steps I can change octaves using these arrow buttons and there's this red indicator here in the octave location lamps showing which octave I'm currently in. As I start to enter steps you can see the patterns start to fill up and the step I've entered most recently stays blinking. To enter rests, I just hit the rest button over here instead of a note. And then if I switch to playback, you can see during playback that when there's a step that has a rest, uh, lamp number eight will light up here to indicate that. There are four other parameters for any given step other than the note. There's gate length, glide, ratchet, and accent. These parameters can be set per step as you're entering notes, or they can be modified after the fact. To edit the parameters for a given step, including changing the note you've entered, just press shift and the step number. The lamp under the step you're editing will blink, and when you select that step for editing, uh, whatever note you have in there currently stored will play just to remind you what you've entered. To edit gate length, you use the uh, tempo and gate length knob. And as I sweep this knob, you can see that the octave and location lamps will light up to show the gate length value. And corresponding to the eight lamps, there are eight gate length increments. These uh, lengths are not absolute, but are scaled with the playback tempo. So the shortest gate length, uh, sorry, all the way down here, is about one-eighth of the time between steps, while the longest gate length will hold it until the next step and create a tie. Note that in order to hear the effects of gate length, Mother 32's sustain mode must be engaged. Next up is glide. A uh, step that you want to glide into the next must have its gate length set to maximum in order to create a tie. And then you enable glide on the destination step by editing that step and twisting the glide knob over here. Octave location lamp number five lights up green during both editing and playback to indicate that glide is active for a given step.
The glide time value as set by the glide knob is global and not set per step. You can also add uh, ratchets or retrigs to a given step. You can enter up to four ratchets and like the gate length value, these are scaled along with the tempo. So adding a second retrig or ratchet will make it sound again halfway between one step and the next. To add ratchets, select a step for editing and then you hold shift and twist the glide knob. You can see the number of ratchets expressed as the yellow lamps on the octave location lamps on lamps one through four. And then during playback, the presence of ratchets on any given step are indicated on octave location lamp number six. And then finally, you can also accent a step, which will momentarily boost both the volume and brightness. To add an accent, select a step for editing and press the accent button. Accents are indicated during playback and editing by uh, octave location lamp number seven here. Everything we've done so far has been based on a simple eight step pattern, even though patterns can be up to 32 steps long. You can navigate among different pages of eight steps each by pressing shift plus one of these range indicators that are on the uh, black key buttons. And then the page you're editing will be indicated by octave location lamps one through four. You can change the length of a pattern by pressing shift plus set end and then pressing the button corresponding to what you'd like to set as the last step. So to turn this eight step pattern into a 16 step pattern, I'd put myself on page two or steps nine through 16, press shift plus set end and then press step 16. Mm -hmm. As you can hear, it's filled those extra eight steps I just added with the default note. So to set it back to eight steps, I'll put myself on page one and then press shift plus set end again and change the last step back to step eight. Patterns need to be manually saved or your edits will be lost as soon as you switch to another pattern. Saving a pattern is simple. Just hold shift and run stop for a second or so, and then select the location you'd like to save to and press shift and run stop again. While I'm in keyboard mode, I can transpose patterns during playback by hitting any note in any octave. Going into step mode enables some different controls over your pattern. And while many pattern and step editing functions are similar, whether you're in keyboard mode or step mode, the real power of step mode is for real time control over patterns during playback. For instance, I can turn individual steps on or off using the step buttons. And I can rotate or shift the pattern forwards or backwards using the arrow buttons. This will be most obvious here with these disabled steps. As I uh, rotate the pattern, you can see the pattern moving forward and back. Step mode has the same controls for navigating through pattern pages and for setting the last step in a pattern, but since the chromatic keyboard is disabled in step mode, these functions here on the black keys are direct and not shift combinations. So you can see that hitting one of these pattern page buttons uh, on its own changes pages right away, and I can also hold down set end without shift and set the last step. There are some other cool performance controls that work in either keyboard or step mode. I can repeat any step by holding hold rest and I can repeat the first step by holding reset.
I can temporarily enable accents on all steps by holding shift and accent. And I can temporarily mute steps while the sequencer keeps advancing by holding shift and rest. And finally, I can temporarily add ratchets or retrigs to all steps by holding down shift and turning the glide knob. Swing can also be applied to your pattern by holding down shift and turning the tempo gate length knob. So that's the sequencer on the Moog Mother32 semi-modular analog synthesizer. If you'd like to learn more about some other aspects of the Mother32, take a look at some of our other videos. And as always, for a great deal, check out our bundles at craftmusic.com.